David, can you hear me? Yes, we're here. So you can hear me. I can see you. I think you're muted, which is great. There was some feedback. I didn't know if it was from me, so I want to mute. Yeah, same. Good. Well, nice to meet you. Yeah, you as well. So, and I'm I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch from my event. So do we just stay here until the event starts or do you want me to leave and come back? This is, I mean, what you might want to do because we do have another 20 minutes. So you might just mute yourself, uh, put on the camera, uh, put off the camera if you've got something okay. else that you want to do. And then maybe five minutes before, so half past, we can meet on this link. So I'll be here to see that's, am I saying his name correctly? Sri. Sri, yeah, Shree. S-R-E-E, -E, Sri. Okay, Sri. Um, I'll be here to make sure that he's able to join and then let's come back yeah in 15 minutes and then we can just I have a few mini questions about the timings and then we can get started oh he can okay. hear can you use the backstage the, the, the lab dial pad pardon do you hear me yeah you want me to leave this tab right yes you can you can leave directly to this green room it's his meeting room. Thank you. Thank you, David. OK. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm uh, looking at, uh, at your house. It, it looks lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm on the, on the top floor. <laughs> so um, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm in Mountain View, California. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, I did see that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's early for you now. Not, not nearly as nice as where you are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, it's sometimes nice to have a pretty nice background for, you know, your calls most of the day. So it's nice to have something. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, and uh, I probably should have uh, tried to find some kind of better backdrop. I had friends who actually constructed some kind of thing. And I was like, well, this, this is my office. And I don't want to have like some green screen. And like, I hate the virtual backgrounds anyway. So I said, this, I'm just going to go with this. So yeah, right. my, my environment's not as nice as yours. <laughs> That's all right. It's all about the content really anyway. So <laughs> somebody has something really cool in the background and you're trying to focus yeah. on the same. I have, I, have a, I have a lovely house up in the mountains, um, but yeah, I can't yeah. really work from there all the time. So oh, fair enough. I'm stuck with this. I mean, but that... Pardon? So I'm stuck. I'm stuck with this background. Like mm. Well, Shree's, at least that's a mountain house. Shree's having a hard time. He was. Mm. Uh, can you send me the URL you clicked on? I didn't save it, and it takes me to the main page. Let I don't know if, if I give him the URL right out of this window. Let me see if he. Can yeah, yeah. It. Try to show him that. Yeah, because usually what happens because we're joining not obviously as an attendee, but you're joining as a as a moderator. So then somebody has to approve everybody who is joining which is what i did with you but i don't see his name here so this is from my browser window if not rejoin backstage All right, I'm just giving him instructions. So if that if that doesn't work, then he can go back to the backstage, re recapture the link from Ivan and come in. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's. And we have we have time, so we're not in a in a hurry yet. Yeah. Um, but maybe I'll let me know when you're done with that, and then I just have a couple of timing questions. That. Yeah, sure. Okay, so he can he says he can hear us. He's not able to show his video. Yeah, this is. See the chat. Yeah, I see the chat, but I don't see um, I don't see him anywhere, which is a little bit strange. Invite to. I wonder whether it's an access thing. Does he have to? Um... Be let in, maybe, and yeah. then yes. And, so, Sri, since you can hear us, uh, can you can you speak, Sri? I wonder. I wonder if he has somehow um, 
uh, I wonder if he has somehow joined just as a participant. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have any access. You know, the other thing, Shri, is, you know, when I came in, it did throw up a pop-up window for me, um, asking for rights to my camera and microphone. Mm. Uh, so I don't know if you saw that, or maybe it didn't throw that up for some reason. You know, the other thing I would do, Shri, and we have time, so, um, yeah. Oh, or you can go back, like I, I, I put in the Slack window, right? Go back and get the proper link and come in the proper way. I don't, I don't know if the link I shared was maybe my session and not um, not for you. Cool. <laughs> it sounds like mm -hmm. technology is amazing, but then sometimes it's really complicated to try and figure out which window, what URL, what program. Yeah, um, so if it works sure. is amazing, but when it doesn't, then it's yeah. like a, a bit of a black hole. I'm going to turn off my Slack notifications. Sorry, you had some questions. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just wanted to ask about the, the timing. So like we said, I'm happy to introduce the session really quickly. Uh, obviously most, oh, okay, now I see him. Just give me one second. Yeah, do it. There we go. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Ah, I was right. big support, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. We got there in the end. Yeah, the, uh, the business yeah. guy giving the technical guy some technical help. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> So can you hear us now? Everybody's microphone is working. We can see. I can see everybody. So yeah, I'll actually invite Cedric also to copy the same link. Let's see if we can get. Okay. Um, yeah, we have a third participant. Okay. Uh, in in case it was kind of slow, we wanted to have somebody kind of semi embedded in the audience who we can also yeah. just talk to. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So what I wanted to ask really is, I should say, I'll, I'll introduce the session quickly at the beginning. And then uh, you said that you're happy to to run the run the 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 session. So I'll be keeping an eye on the chat and seeing what comes up, whether there are any questions. But um, do you want to keep it interactive throughout the whole thing, or or shall we leave five or ten minutes in the end, ideally? Oh, uh, and what would you leave the five or ten minutes for at the end? Well, if there are audience questions, so if people are typing as they're listening to the session, something comes to mind. Uh, okay. Um... Yeah, we should probably do some kind of a check uh, for that. Mm. Uh, I mean, I think if we're having, I'm just going to think out loud for a second. If we're having a lively discussion mm. and the topic runs all the way to the end, then, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily see a need to stop the discussion mm -hmm. and check yeah. for, um, you know, but if, 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 if the discussion is not lively, mm. You know, then we'll certainly be leaning leaning on any chat questions we possibly can get our hands on. Right. Yeah. And when you say question conversations not lively, do you mean in the chat or in our video? In, yeah, live. Yeah, because yeah. people can talk, right? Can they show their mm -hmm. video? Or are we just talking to ourselves? Um, you're probably talking amongst yourselves in case, unless you know we have somebody from the audience who who. You know, we can question. see who's in the audience, right? Pardon? We can see the list of yeah. the audience. Yes, yeah, you can see who's in there. And you can also see, I don't know whether you're able to follow, but you can see the conversation as people are typing, introducing themselves and asking questions. So you'll be able to see that on the right hand side. Okay. Um, and if I pick somebody out mm -hmm. and ask them a question, can they share their video and talk? Technically, as far as I know, they should be able to, but given the problems that we had, it might be a little bit risky in case people haven't. Let, hold on one second, I'm going to let Cedric in as well, but it might be a little bit risky okay. in case it doesn't happen. People have permission issues. So, yeah. So uh, that's um, a little bit of a, yeah, it's a bit of a risk. Got Hello? It. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, perfect. Hey, we can Cedric. See you. Hey, Cedric. Yeah, we were just discussing about the the format of the of the session. So, it's have you, have, have you run uh, other roundtables, Jenica? Yeah, but they've been a conversation, like interview format or conversation format between the people who are moderators, which is now the three of you. And yeah. then there were some there were some good questions actually that came through in advance from the from the RSVP list. So that might be useful in case there are no audience questions. I can just pull questions from there. 
Okay. Um, but we've not done on this event. We've not opened the the question floor video for for the audience members. I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to get some participation. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, now I know I will likely fail, but it's okay. <laughs> I'll try. I mean, because I'd rather if it's a round table, right? So. Mm. Uh, I. You know, I want to try to ask some questions of the audience mm -hmm. and uh, see if we can get people to respond. Because otherwise, it's just me, Shri, and Cedric talking to each other. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> understanding that doesn't seem. Yeah, what did you do last weekend? Blah blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> try to stick to the. We have a theme for the roundtable. Helps a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and just just so you know as well. Um, we weren't as excited about the questions that were submitted. Okay. So a lot of them were not really on topic. Um, happy to go into some of them um, mm -hmm. because I have a long background in APIs. So a few of yeah. them I can certainly talk to. Um, it's just not really the direction that we wanted to take the conversation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's, we, we put together a, a small list of questions and, you know, maybe it's going to be a risky strategy now uh, based on what you said. Mm -hmm. uh, but what our hope is that we can actually get some interaction from the audience. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one suggestion on that would be also just post the question and ask people to type in their answers, their comments. So you don't necessarily, it's not as interactive, but it takes away some of the pressure of, of dealing with the video sharing. So you can just say, let us know what you think in a, in a comment. Okay. as a workaround maybe we try that as a way to slowly warm them up yeah maybe somebody will be brave enough to unmute their microphone and actually say something let me actually i'm just quickly going to go back to, to ivan just briefly to make sure that i know how that process works so then yeah, do it. yeah do so it. i'll unmute myself i'll be back in a minute great I think tomorrow's session is even earlier, isn't it? <laughs> to check and make sure that I yeah, uh, move to the move to Europe, you know. Go to bed on <laughs> it's four p.m. here. All good. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow is uh, earlier than this. Yeah, six six a.m. for me. Yeah, that's that's okay. I can get up and go. Uh, you know, actually, I I actually prefer this or the alternative because when I lived in London, <clears throat> the thing that uh, I felt was worse was getting all kinds of calls right around dinner time from California. Right, so you try to sit down with your family and have dinner, and people are calling and people are texting and like all this stuff. And like, you know, oh yeah, hey, forget hey. about dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I've known that to the halfway. <laughs> Give me two hours to just hang out with the family. Uh, I'll be in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that so the plan, as you probably heard, then Cedric is you know we're going to try to get people to participate a little bit. We're going to try to lead them through the data step talk data stacks topics and see if we can get some interaction going. Yeah, sure. Because um, that's that's more the direction of the conversation, the topics that we want to have, right? Versus yeah. what we submitted was like a bunch of random. Yeah, um, I'm here as a backup, sure. Um, I do, you know, um, as I told to, to Sri, uh, I used to be a pre-send for an API management solution. So I do, I, I know some stuff on APIs, so I will have my um, you uh, know, re response time window, just one minute, no more, just to, you know, give some room to talk about yeah. more about data sacks. What, what company did you work for again? Sorry. Software AG. Oh, you work with Software AG. Okay. Yep. I did three years at Software AG, setting the API management solution. Got it. How long did you do that? Uh, three years. Three years. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, developer, tech lead, solution architect, uh, consulting architect, principal architect, then pre-sales, uh, then DevRel. Just yeah. So you're 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 massively underselling yourself. You know you know a few things about APIs. Uh, a few. <laughs> <laughs> 
but but yeah so the idea is really to you know have some sharp response you know just yeah um right so just briefly i spoke to ivan and he just said yes so audience members can join and they can share their audio and video they just have to re request that permission so if you encourage people to ask questions just if you let them know they have to go through the same process of to say ask your ask for the permission to share video and audio and then i'll approve them and they will become one of the moderators and then they'll be able to ask okay. questions and take part in the conversation okay so but otherwise otherwise they're not shared can't share on demand they essentially have to ask yeah uh and then the only way they can interact is uh on the chat yeah yeah but if you're running the session um i'm looking after the the chat and i'll keep an eye on on if there are any questions who will be live so then as soon as somebody pops up i'll be able to admit okay. them and then take them in the conversation okay it's pro probably in place to uh, prevent chaos yeah i think so too <laughs> <laughs> um, all right when does our session start how much time is left we've got four minutes so we'll start in okay 25 to okay. Oh, this well, is your well. first session for the day. No. Cedric had something. <laughs> it's my second one. I okay. did a workshop this morning, 10, 10, oh, oh yeah, 10, 40. Yeah. Okay. Yes, So you've been, you've been up for a while already. Yeah. Yeah. How was it? It was interesting. <laughs> no, um, to be honest, yeah, we struggled to find some, some, some people to join. It was a bit uh, empty, but as most of virtual stuff, to be honest. Mm, yeah. What was the what was the topic of that one? Uh, it was be uh, get uh, no SS API layers on top of your database. So okay. you have the database, put that on, and now you have REST, gRPC, GraphQL APIs available for you. Mm. Okay. Nice. Well, hopefully now that we're, you know, getting a few more time zones as they're waking up, hopefully we get a little bit more people join yeah. this this session. So we'll start in a in a couple of minutes, and these will obviously be recorded. So if there are people who don't join at the beginning, they'll be able to watch the watch the start in case they want to see the session afterwards. So we're gonna start on the dot, and then we'll have twenty five minutes for the for the entire discussion, and then I'll just we'll wrap it up. All at, right. At four o'clock. UK time. We should have like a background waiting music for the, you know, <laughs> you're calling somewhere and you're waiting for somebody to pick up your call. We should have some sort of session here in the background. Yeah. After, after flying in uh, late last night, I feel like I should have had a second coffee this morning. Mm. <laughs> Where did you come from? Oh, where did you I go? Was at, uh, I was at uh, the Money 2020 conference in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, which was pretty good. Yeah, my, mm. my first uh, conference and actually first uh, business trip since the beginning of the pandemic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, any key differences? But, sorry? Any key differences you're noticing between? Well, yeah, you have to wear a mask all day yeah <laughs> which i'm not really fond of uh yeah. no so but it was a it's a huge uh you know convention center as you would imagine mm. uh, that's big yes i'm surprised yeah, yeah, yeah. So i don't know how many thousands of people were there you know but a, a massive uh, exhibition hall and like all that thing um you know but other, other than everybody wearing a mask it was pretty normal you know? mm. good to be back uh you know talking to people face to face yeah in person <clears throat> yeah 100 percent. i mean online yeah. i think we also online events they they are amazing because we get to do things that we wouldn't wouldn't normally do but there is a certain element that you don't get to have when yeah. you can't actually have a coffee with someone in person yeah exactly yeah so it was it was good it was a, it was a good two days i only did two of the four days so Um, okay, well, why don't we get started? So we have hopefully a few more people joining, um, and then we'll just stick to the 
stick to the schedule. And like I said, yeah, this free session will be recorded. So if there are people who want to catch some of it afterwards that they miss at the beginning, um, they can do that. Okay, great. Um, so if you, you'll see um, folks. Uh, okay, so I see how. Mm. Great. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So on the right hand side, if you you have the chat and then you have a list of people who've joined the, the session so far. So um, if you're able to keep an eye on on that and and yeah, we can bring people into the the actual roundtable format um, if if people want to join. So that's also possible. You see the the list of names on the on the right hand side. Got it. Um, great. So let's get going. So welcome everyone to this to this roundtable where we're talking about shifting the focus to real time data in financial services. So financial services obviously has always been at the forefront of real time data and the, the focus on that data, it really just keeps growing. So in here, we'll have a, a deeper discussion on how open source cloud native technologies can drive real time insights from from that data. Um, my name is Jannika. I will be your host and moderator today. I work as a systems and open sustainability lead at Platformable. And then we have three speakers who will be joining the, the session. Uh, but before I hand over to, to David and Cedric and Sri, I just want to remind you that anyone who is participating, you have the, the chat function on the right hand side. So feel free to take, take part in the conversation. Let us know what you're thinking as you're following along and post any any questions um, as they as they come up. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to hand over to David, and I'll let you take it from here. Great, thanks, Jenica. Um, so I wanted hoping to uh, just start out this session, um, kind of asking asking the question, you know, how how many of um, of you who have joined uh, are API producers? Uh, versus uh, API consumers. Um, so if you can go to the go to the chat <clears throat> uh, and put in uh, whether you're a producer or a consumer, and um, let me see if I can uh, put in the chat to get started. Okay. Um, and I can see Helic and uh, Baljeet. Um, if you want to put in um, whether you're a producer or a consumer, neither. OK. Baljeet's either uh, just being modest or learning about APIs. Um, <clears throat> Okay, um, and and the reason and the reason I ask is because <laughs> Cedric as well. That's awesome. Uh, and and the reason we ask is you know um, the tech stack and the concerns are you know very very different. Um, okay, both uh, we don't work for an end user. Uh, now you've got me curious, Baljeet, what, what what exactly that means. Um, Actually, before, before you jump into the discussion, can we just do a quick round of, of introductions? So before we jump into asking audience questions, why don't you guys introduce yourselves and maybe talk a little bit about your roles? In oh, yeah, sure. Areas. Sorry. So maybe that kind of helps people get started. No, nothing like just jumping right into the pool, right? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so, okay. So um, I've actually spent uh, over a decade in the API space. Um, I uh, joined uh, Apigee, which some of you might uh, know the Apigee company, uh, API platform company, when it was you know maybe a dozen people <clears throat> sitting around a table. Uh, we had a, a concept of uh, what uh, API business was and, and so forth, but it was extreme, extremely early. This is well, well before um, uh, APIs as, uh, you know, at least web APIs as a channel to market was really a thing. Um, and you know, grew grew Apigee, um, spent a bunch of time in the telco space and in the financial services space, um, helping companies with API strategy and going to market with APIs. Um, ultimately, we took Apigee uh, public on the Nasdaq, and then a few years later, were acquired um, by Google. And I spent uh, I guess three years at Google, uh, still still in uh, uh, API ecosystems role. 
Um, so now, now I'm at uh, data stacks and we can talk about that for the round table, um, you know, <clears throat> because uh, I firmly believe that API strategy is really a uh, data strategy, right? And how, how do you take your data to market or how do you consume other people's data and use it and so forth? So, um, <clears throat> you know, when, and I'll, I'll add one last piece of context before passing it over to Sri and Cedric, uh, you know, one of the things I learned because it, when I was at Apogee, we constantly thought about the API, how to take APIs to market, how to help API producers and, and uh, how to attract API consumers and so forth and API business, <clears throat> business models and go to market plans. I didn't spend any time really thinking about how those APIs got built under the covers. Um, and when I came to data stacks, I was astonished to realize that many of the same API programs that I worked on at Apogee actually had their foundations on data stacks. Uh, and I was, I was actually quite shocked and, you know, never spent the time to think about that. Um, and so that's, that's who I am and why I'm here. Uh, Sri or Cedric? Yeah, sure, I can go. Thanks. Um, my name is uh, Sri. Um, I'm a data architect with DataStax, and I primarily focus on banking and financial services customers. So much like what David just talked about, um, really trying to work in the intersection of API and data and how businesses can you know, capitalize and leverage on the data that is exposed so that they can um, broaden their data, data ecosystem, connect more apps and make uh, you know, applications a lot more useful you know, in this uh, digital economy that we all live in. So look forward to the discussions and uh, you know, off to you, Cedric. So, and I'm Cedric Lundven and I'm leading the developer advocacy team at DataStax. So mostly developer, uh, Java developer. Uh, I created uh, eight years ago, an open source framework called FF4J. Uh, developing an extensive API there. Um, but I, I used to be tech lead solution architect. I spent uh, three years internalized in a big bank, then moved to an API management solution provider as well, leading a data stacks uh, all about implementing and coding. Fantastic. And, and uh, so <clears throat> I may have competed with Cedric at some point. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's possible. <laughs> yeah, possible, totally. Yeah, so um, you know, one of the things um, that we are interested in um, when it comes to APIs and and data is what the the tech stack looks like um, to expose uh, APIs and kind of what that uh, build process looks like. And some of the uh, companies that we're at. Um, it's pretty interesting. We see um, see sometimes kind of multiple layers to get an API out to market. Um, and you know, Cedric, I'd be interested in your view because I think you've probably seen a lot of these uh, deployments as well. And, and I, I think Sri, you're working on a couple right now that maybe you can you can talk about. <clears throat> um, you know, where you've got, uh, and we can maybe use PSD2 or we can use one of your um, customers as a, as an example for a, for a deployment, but you've got, you know, some data, like in a banking situation, you might have a core bank system that has, you know, account information, transactions and that kind of thing. Right. And how that actually gets exposed out um, as, uh, as an API, you know, for, for consumers. And so um, either Sri or Cedric, do you have uh, an example of something you can um, walk through that talks about how, how to go from, uh, you know, like a core transactional system to, uh, you know, a production API? Um, and what, yeah, sure. And what, what the layers look like? Yeah, so I, I can speak to that. Yeah, that's a good question. So one of the things that we have seen and so let me sort of walk you from the bottom of the stack, right? So if you're thinking about core banking, underneath it is all is probably a table called accounts or a transaction, which really tells when a user logs in through their mobile phone or web app that what is my balance and then what are some of the you know, most recent transactions that you do. You have to keep in mind that the API that is getting exposed can be used by a person that is building a mobile app that can very well be exposed to somebody who's running marketing in terms of products and promotions. So 
what we really are looking at is you know two set of apis one that we see as you know technical or data apis that simply provide access to data that is underneath and people want to build it once and be done you know in a banking you know infrastructure but on top of that people layer in domain apis so if you work in consumer banking probably what you want to show is slightly different if you want to show offers in terms of what else you could do in terms of getting better deals um, or what other products are out there you may be doing something different you may be working in a different department in you know tax and auditing where you're looking at data from a holistically different ways right so there are verticals that are organized you know in any particular financial institutions but the data you know is really i mean you know agnostic of where the database is you you know it may be a federation of databases so there is a set of people that are building data apis and then there is a set of developers that are building domain apis and um, you know what what we want to um, you know understand a little bit is i mean are you encountering situations like that and where you know we work well with data and api being very integrated is that you don't have to spend a lot of time building the data apis so we do the heavy lifting for you um, and we see a lot of people do this in the marketplace where you know the data is now exposed through a rest or a graphql or a grpc endpoint um, so that you can then focus on, you know, building out the domain APIs or business APIs. Yeah, that's that's super engineering uh, interesting, Sri. So, so you've got um, kind of. I'm assuming those are different architectural layers. Correct. Right. Um, and then you also mentioned that there's different uh, teams uh, as well, right? Um, and so do you have uh, any notion of what the handoff is between, um, say, the that data API layer and, and the domain uh, API layer? Yeah. So I, I think the best way to think about, so there are two questions, right? So how do you segregate these teams as people? And then how do you segregate these teams? And what is the handoff point or what is the demarcation point? You know, in terms of, you know, the you know, how you segregate the people is if you really think about a data engineering team, people that are building the data APIs typically fall into the data engineering team. So their job is to move the data through a pipeline and make it available for their consumers. So they're not necessarily interfacing with the business analysts. They're not necessarily talking to, a um, you know, somebody that is, you know, running the business services team. So their job is to expose data. And they're really looking at how do I build a common infrastructure layer that satisfies many of my customers so that I don't have to repeat it. And they're really coming in from a mindset of data engineering. And 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 I think it's important. I think one thing that you, you just struck in uh, that I just realized, uh, their customers are actually eternal, right? Yes. Their, their customers, customers are, are the, other, the other development team. Correct. So their customers are internal. Um, the the users of this or the consumers are this are the people that are working in the business space so to speak now they can be internal customers or to david's point they can actually be external customers so so think of it as you're exposing these apis to external you know fintech providers so we worked uh, you know as an example with a couple of companies that take your data augment or aggregate your data and then give you value back to your data so for example it could be categorization of data to geolocation of where you may have done transactions. So they may aggregate certain things. So there is a lot of these happening in terms of, you know, having the open API economy. And as people are thinking about giving banking as a service, you know, FinTech as a service, you really need that API to power it. So that second layer, I would say they are coming in more from a business first. They are more of your business analysts. They are your consultants thinking about how do I provide value with this data without spending too much time on the technology layer. So that's sort of their drivers and they are definitely both internal customers and external customers. So that's sort of how I see the distinction. And then I think the demarc demarcation point between them is pretty interesting, right? So it's really the API specifications. It's a lot more black and white that, you know, the API developer says, here's the API that I will provide you. Let me do the heavy lifting of figuring out where this data is going to land what is, you know, how am I going to bring it to you? But the handshake really is, um, you know, the, you know, the type of fields that you provide 
the amount of time. So that's another key consideration is that there is a handshake in terms of the latency, the throughput that I will guarantee you X milliseconds in terms of response time, both on the write and both on the read. So that typically is what we you know get to agree upon. Okay. And, and uh, Cedric, have you seen um, the same thing? Yeah, um, you know, more technical side of things is always uh, ex you know, open the core system to expose first. Uh, you think about, you know, lately the REST API. And then as uh, three told, you do have more and more use cases. And so you switch to gRPC because, uh, uh, oh, Chris, I'm sorry, GraphQL, because with GraphQL, you can shape the query you like. And for the same endpoint, you can have people coming from multiple divisions that can use the data. And this is the reason why GitHub, for instance, export this GraphQL endpoint. And I think that even in the banking and financing, soon we will see more GraphQL because it will um, uh, allow this kind of multiple use case for the same endpoint. But then it's not only about uh, I expose an API and expect you as a client to read my API or pull my API. You should also be aware to push the information to your customer, you know, do the real time thing. Uh, in the HTTP, it started with, uh, with the webhook, but I think we can do way more better now, right? Yeah. Do um, and for the audience, uh, are you guys have you if you're building or working with APIs, have you moved uh, to GraphQL or are you, have you um, uh, tried uh, gRPC at all or worked with APIs that are gRPC? I'd love to uh, see that in the in the chat if you actually have seen seen that shift that Cedric is describing. That would be um, super interesting and kind of a validation of. Um, yeah, please. In financial, it's all about low latency. Uh, we used to, to to use the super low latency brokers. Uh, so now for the APIs, you know, move to gRPC, I guess. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, okay. Heard some cautions about GraphQL at API days a couple of years ago. Ah, super, super interesting. And obviously, um, technology kind of evolves over the years. But um, uh, Baljeet, I'd be super interested if um, if you can just throw in wh what you remember um, about some of those cautions, um, and then um, wh and while you're typing that in, uh, Cedric uh, or Sri or maybe Cedric since you brought it up, uh, is, are there any gotchas? Uh, moving to GraphQL that you've seen? Of course there are. And, you know, it's also related to, to, to API security. You know, a GraphQL can do a lot of things for you. It's, it's, it's magic for the client, <laughs> not for the people who expose the API. Because if you expose the API, uh, with GraphQL, you can compose and aggregate uh, data coming from multiple sources. So it can get pretty complex, EV in CPU, uh, getting some time out. But just for the business use case, also GraphQL with the error handling is not that good. So there is no silver bullet. But still, as a data provider, if you want to expose data for multiple consumers with different use cases, you can uh, leverage on the way to expose the data, but also put some, uh, you know, some 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 guard rates like the throttling for both the, the, the number of calls, the time, the, the error management. You need to be aware that GraphQL can expand across all your data and took some time, so just be prepared. Yeah. yeah. What about the, as a consumer, I really like GraphQL though, right? So it's <laughs> easy to work with, you know, leave the heavy lifting to the provider. So to me, it gives a lot of flexibility and then solves the problem of, you know, overfetching and underfetching quite well, right? And then, uh, you know, in, in, you know, in systems like Cassandra, where you may not have a join, it helps out a little bit, you know, in terms of being able to get data from a few different places. Yeah. What about this notion that Balajit's talking about, about um, kind of shifting things back to look like a big monolith? Um, under, underneath the covers, it doesn't have to be that way, though, right? Um, you know, or, or is a, I mean, I guess there would be a concern that, hey, if you just have one big uh, graph, QL API, 
it's potentially, I guess, a choke point or a failure point, right? Unless you expose that as a, uh, uh, you know, as a kind of a distributed system. What do you guys think? Is there ways around that? I mean, this GraphQL gateway, in a sense, uh, also a concept that is, uh, has been pushed by Netflix lately, does not have to be a single point of failure. You know, it, we will have uh, it stateless. You will expect to have multiple instances and a nice load balancer in front of it. Okay, that's for the single point of failure. Now, for the monolith, it's I would say it's a hub and spoke because indeed you will talk to the hub, uh, and the hub in charge of uh, retrieving the data coming from multiple sources. But that's not new, right? Uh, people still doing ESB for from ages. Even if you do, you know, a mobile app. You will only invoke your backend, you know, BFF backend for front end, and that would be this guy in charge of, you know, gathering and, and doing the stuff. And so, for the view, the controller is a single point of failure. That's always the same. You know, at some point, at some location, you always need to do the aggregation, composition, filtering. That's your consumer. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I had a um, boy. This goes back a very long time. I guess I've been in the API space for <laughs> quite a while. Um, uh, large, large, uh, very popular shoe company who um, got very frustrated because they hired an interactive agency to help them build mobile apps. And, and Cedric, to your point, um, you know, the interactive agency had actually uh, built a proxy in AWS, and this was before um, this company was had moved a lot of their systems into the cloud. And, and so the shoe company was extremely frustrated to realize that the interactive agency that they had hired had essentially um, built that proxy and aggregated a bunch of APIs um, you know, and was also presumably caching a bunch of data and doing some other things. And it was completely outside of their, uh, outside of their control, <clears throat> right? Um, and I think that, that is the kind of scenario where have they had a GraphQL API that they potentially you know, could have maintained control, right, of that data, and not not the interactive agency wouldn't have had to have, have done that stitching on the, uh, you know, the back end as a front end, as you called it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just looking at the clock. We're running um, to the point where we're starting to wrap up this session. Oh darn! Yeah. We're just getting started. Yeah, I know. Um, but I think. Let us know in the, the audience as well, what's the best way to get a hold of, of your team, anybody who's been a part of this conversation, if people want to wanna take it forward? Can people get in touch with you by LinkedIn or how um, how is the well, best to? Yeah. yeah, so I think we're all, uh, all three of us are on LinkedIn. Um, mm. I don't know yeah. if the conference shares the contact info, but certainly you can grab us. Uh, on LinkedIn and drop us a note if you want to continue the conversation. I think that would be great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think everybody has their LinkedIn profiles on their on their Hopin profile. And uh, then a quick question, a yeah, quick question. I guess I'd like to answer from everyone. Um, for anybody who's doing the shift, they're starting to think. You know, we're shifting and focusing more on real time data. What is one thing that you think everybody should be thinking about or being be aware of as they as they're starting to make that shift? On a very high level. Uh, Cedric or Sri? <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah, so I think um, what we are really thinking more about is the fast data layer and system of engagement. If you think about some of the practices that you're going through today, you want to have, you know, instant gratification. That is the name of the, uh, you know, life and digital economy, right? So you're not really waiting for data to give you insights like a few days later or a few hours later. So so the real time, you know, becomes very, very crucial and critical, if not necessary at this point, right? So it's just sort of built in in some of the ways that you do it. So, and then also not also expose it, you know, to wider set of audience. So it is not just being real time with two or three apps or 10 apps that you're building internally, but also to be able to collaborate over, you know, you know, through multiple APIs, through multiple systems and providing that real time interface. So that's really what is crucial these days. And then, you know, that's what we are trying to do best in terms of integrating and data and API in the real time world. Yeah, I think if I had to leave with, uh, with one thought, 
I would, I would share back that a lot of the projects that we're seeing now um, are trying to incorporate some kind of intelligence uh, to improve the experience, make it, <clears throat> make it smarter or make it more personalized. Um, in all of those cases, um, they all involve some kind of real time decisioning, like in, in the moment uh, personalization or in the moment, uh, you know, machine learning kind of driven decisions that change the experience. Uh, and so then the, the design point that we see, the requirements that come at us from, from those development teams, from those architecture teams, uh, heavily, heavily stress uh, being able to ingest signals, uh, say from the mobile app or the usage, uh, make the decision and then, you know, change, change what the experience looks like. And so that, you know, the, that's, we see, we see that trend a lot more. And so if you're, if you're looking at that and, and you're hearing in your projects, Hey, personalization or, you know, real time decisions, that'll, that pushes down a bunch of requirements onto the tech stack, uh, of, of how you do that. Great. Cedric, Thank you. you. I wish we had more time to devil into that. Cedric, do you want to share any last words or are you happy with how, how this ended? No, I think, uh, you know, they've been told most of him. I just, you know, would like to drop one link in the chat, you know, just one link, because uh, what we did lately is just build some gateway on top of the database, exposing those real time API, okay, stargate.io, open source, uh, put a database, put the gateway on top of it, have GraphQL, gRPC, uh, um, REST, I mean, document available for you and you don't have to code. And when you talk about data API, uh, maybe that's just what you want to do as the first layer. Perfect, thank you. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to wrap up, but thank you very much for all three speakers and the audience for taking part in the conversation. and. Um, Enjoy the rest of the of the sessions today and hopefully tomorrow as well. Thank you. Thanks for your help, Jenica. Great. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.